me see if I'm turning. Hey, I am, absolutely. Uh, thank you guys. Uh, thank you for leading us in worship. How many of you wanted that to keep going? I did too, man. Gotta, one of these days I'll just take the day off and we'll just have nothing but worship. It'll be great. Ah, well, Merry Not Quite Christmas uh, anymore. Uh, happy Not Quite New Year's. Um, the time between Christmas and New Year's can be an interesting time for a lot of us. It's kind of a no man's land. It is the week that Google Calendar forgot. Some of us, uh, maybe we're off work. Maybe there's very little work to do. Maybe some of us have some days off or we're on half days. Even if you're going into the office, half of the workforce isn't there. People are on vacation. Sometimes vendors and suppliers aren't answering their phones. They're hard to get a hold of until the new year. And if you took an anonymous poll of the people in the office, if they were being honest, 95% of them would tell you that they're basically pretending to work until at least January 2nd, because they are living in the period of the in-between, between the rush to get everything done before Christmas and the hit the ground running or gradually bring the operation back up to power and speed after New Year's, depending on what type of environment you work in or the individual disposition of your bosses when New Year's rolls around. Might also depend on how good their New Year's parties were, but I digress. Some of us, we're in the zombie state. We have become one with the couch. We've been surviving on cheese and Christmas cookies. We are in a Christmas cookie crumble coma. We haven't touched a vegetable in weeks. Our wardrobe changes have all been variations on some sort of pajamas, and we are all tired of having to tell Netflix that yes, we are still watching. It's a weird time. We are in the in-between. It's a weird time. It could be a good time, but it's not necessarily all sunshine and roses or cheese and Netflix. During the in-between, though we may not mention it to other people, this slowdown, this break in our schedules, this change in our day-to-day -day routine can mess with us. It's why you got to keep the Netflix going or keep doom scrolling on your phone. Because if you stop, if you take some time to be alone with your thoughts and feelings, it might go a couple of different ways. You might recognize that you're not being all that productive, that you're not making the wisest choices when it comes to taking care of yourself. And you might start thinking this in-between time is a waste of time, a wasted week. And you start feeling guilty about the things you're not getting done, even though you're not really sure what you could get done under the current circumstances because you're in the in-between. And sometimes this can lead to a sort of depression kicking in. We start beating ourselves up, and then we're not enjoying this in-between time that's kind of baked into our calendars or at least silently agreed upon by much of the population. Now, on the other hand, some of us might start feeling this anxiety in our brains pushing us. Scripts start running in our heads saying, hey, you can't sit down right now. Turn off the Gilmore Girls Marathon and get moving, all right? The new year will be here in T-minus so many days, and you have to prep because you have to be better than last year. You got workout routines to download, exercise equipment to buy, budgets to write, planners to buy and populate, fridges to clean out, healthy food to buy. And you can start to feel all this pressure to go and do all of these things in a very short period of time before the new year hits. Because when the new year hits, not only are you going to do all of those things, you got to go back to doing all the things you'd normally be doing right now and being stressed about all the other things that you'd normally be stressed about right now. And those scripts, that anxiety, that pressure, again, can lead you to not enjoying the in-between times, or at least not making the most out of the in-between times. So today, I thought we would talk a little bit about the in-between times, what we're supposed to be doing during it, how to make the most of it, what God might be doing in the in-between time, and what God might want from us during the in-between times. And you might be saying to yourself right now, well, uh, Josh, timing being everything, <laughs> it's New Year's Eve. Uh, New Year's starts tomorrow. January 2nd is only a heartbeat away. True. But for some of you, the in-between will stretch until Epiphany or a little afterwards. 
So this may still be relevant to you. Hopefully it'll still be relevant and hopefully helpful next year when the in-between times roll around again. And if you don't remember what I said, you can always go back and watch this message on our Seacoast Redondo YouTube channel, Cheap Plug. But the in-between isn't always just the week between Christmas and New Year's. For some of us, we've been in the in-between for a while, since way before December 26th. Some of us have had periods of our lives that have been the in-between. And some of us will experience the in-between when we least expect it, maybe in 2024. These in-betweens being the period of time in between what we know. The times in between adventures or the times in between life decisions or moments. They can be times of confusion or uncertainty when we're not quite sure what the future holds. A time when we're not quite sure what we should be doing. Maybe a time of potential change of maybe big life changes on the horizon. Or a time when we've been assured of a promise, a future, something that we have to look forward to, but we have to wait until it gets here. So what do we do with the in-between times? Now, the Bible is actually full of in-between times. Uh, Abraham waited 25 years before God blessed him with the son, making the promise of his becoming a great nation and blessing all of the other nations of the world come true. 25 years of in-between. Joseph had dreams of being in a position of influence where his brothers and family members would recognize as such. But there were over 22 years of in-between time between his dreams and their fulfillment. 13 of those years which were spent in service as a slave or in prison. David was anointed by Samuel to be king, but he would have to endure almost 15 years of in-between time before finally assuming the kingship. And there's so many other examples too. Moses spent 40 years in the desert before God chose him as the leader to liberate his people. Uh, Subsequently, the Israelites spent 40 years of in-between time between their liberation and their entrance into the promised land. Here's one. It's way too detailed to discuss in a single sitting or even a single message. It's just one you can add to the list. There was around 400 years of in-between time between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Now, obviously, that doesn't mean that nothing happened during that time. A lot happened during that time. A lot of things happened that influence our understanding of both the Old and New Testament. If we don't understand what happened in between, uh, we will be robbing ourselves of understanding some of the context of Scripture. But 400 years of in-between time on the main quest storyline for our video game fans out there, that is a lot of in-between time. Here's one to think about. We just finished celebrating Christmas, the birth of our Savior. It was 30 years between our Savior's birth and the beginning of his ministry and his baptism at the hands of John the Baptist. What was happening during the in-between? We don't know a lot about it, to be honest. But one thing is for sure, based on all of these examples, in the in-between, God was still there. In the in-between, God was still working. In the in-betweens, God might have been adjusting situations, changing landscapes, preparing people's hearts, building into those who he had chosen for certain tasks. In the in-betweens, God is still working. He is always working and causing things to work for the good of those who love him. Now, you can read all of these accounts and more. You can see that for yourself. That's a, a macro approach. It's a big picture kind of analysis. It's, it's way too much to take in and digest. So today, I just want to kind of go micro in our approach. And I want to share some things, things that could maybe just be for this week or, or time of in-between, but it could also be part of the bigger in-between times that we may encounter. But I want to concentrate on what we should be doing. What does God want us to do during the in-betweens? Because we don't have to worry about what God is doing. What God is doing will be for our good and his glory. What God is doing, we can trust in, even if we don't always understand or agree with his timing or timeline. So the question is, what should we be doing to make the most out of the in-between time? 
Truthfully, it may be slightly different for all of us depending on our situations. Maybe how long we're going to be in the in-between for, or what God is calling us to do or not do, as the case may be. But I went looking through scripture for some possibilities, and I figured I'd give you what I found in the hopes that it would be helpful and encouraging to you today. So uh, I'm going to share that. Your mileage may vary. As always, pray for wisdom as you apply this advice to your specific lives and situations. In fact, um, if it's all right with you, I'd like to pray for us right now. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you would speak to our hearts this morning. Um, Lord, let this resonate with us wherever we are uh, in in our lives, Lord, if we're in one of those in-between times. Lord, make it clear to us what we're supposed to do. Help us to see you working in the in-betweens. And Lord God, I ask your blessings. I ask your protection. And I ask for for good things, Lord, for everybody in here um, according to your will in 2024. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So, you know, I, I, I think we tend to downplay or diminish the importance of in-between times. We tend to be a culture that values the origin of an idea and achieving the goal, but not necessarily the steps in between that it takes to get there. We'll focus on the starting line of our journey and the finish line at the end of our destination, thinking that these are the points of value not realizing that some of the most important times, the times that can lead to our success in many different arenas and ventures, are actually those in-between times. And it's been a while, and it's the last message of the year, and I feel like talking about hockey, so I'm gonna. Um, Now, this will work for any sport, so you can make your own example, football, baseball, cricket, billiards, highlight, whatever, take your pick. But My favorite sport is hockey, so that is the analogy I'm going to be using today. Let's say we're hockey players. Awesome. And we just got done leaving it all out on the ice against the toughest team in our division, the terrible 23s. Now, they may be the toughest squad that we faced since we took on Team COVID back in 2020, but Team 23, they were nothing to scoff at. It was a battle. They had that one guy, Inflation, who kept hitting us out of nowhere. They had those fourth-line bruisers, war, and international conflict that were wreaking havoc with our systems. We kept getting interfered with by illness. And truthfully, our on-ice communication between our own team members maybe could have been a little better. There was some frustration, maybe a little lack of trust between teammates. And because we got frustrated, well, we took a few stupid penalties. Now... How we did against the terrible 23s is up to you to decide. Maybe different stories for all of us. Maybe we won, but we had some injuries and setbacks along the way. We're a little banged up after the game. Maybe we feel like we didn't win, but despite all the pressure, we didn't give up. We were able to take it to overtime, and at least we eked out a point. Or maybe you feel like the game didn't go that way for you. Maybe you feel like you just got slaughtered by a year or um, a team with way too much muscle and firepower who took advantage of you while you were in the middle of a rebuild. Maybe you feel like no matter how close you came, you just couldn't get any breaks. You couldn't get any puck luck. Nothing was going right. Nothing was going in. And so you took the L and you skated off the ice with your head down. Now, No matter how your particular game against the terrible 23s ended, imagine if I told you as you were stepping off the ice that you would have to go right back out there against a new expansion team that we don't know much about, the troubling 24s. You would probably quit because you've been given no time to recuperate or heal, no time to think about what happened out there, no time to prepare for upcoming opponents, If you went right back out there in your weakened, tired state, it would probably be an exercise in futility, a game of attrition where players didn't play to win. They just played to survive until the next conflict or contest with nary a hope of attaining victory, improvement, or even just enjoying the game. And if the game were like that, then only the most sadistic or devoted would continue to suit up and play. 
For some people, I have not described a game of hockey. I have described how they see the game of life. Never slowing, never stopping, just always on to the next thing until we drop or wind up on the long-term IR. We need the in-between times. We need the in-between times to relax. If we live in a constant state of anxiety, fight or flight, adrenaline pumping, heads up all the time, always looking for the next hit, always having to be keenly aware of where everybody else is on the ice and what they might or might not do, that's only sustainable for so long. In fact, in hockey, it's not even sustainable for 60 minutes straight. That's why there's a period break every 20 minutes. We need in-between times to rest, to get our strength back, to let our bodies and brains feel safe for a little bit, to refuel our bodies and minds and spirits. In the in-between times, we should take the opportunity to get the rest we need if that opportunity is given to us. Even when Jesus walked the earth, he stated the importance of rest to his disciples, at one point telling his disciples, let's go off by ourselves to a quiet place and rest a while. He said this because there were so many people coming and going that Jesus and his apostles didn't even have time to eat. Our human bodies and human brains need to rest, to get out of fight or flight mode, to recuperate our strength and our energy. That's just a reality of being in this corporeal form. God created a Sabbath day for rest. Jesus advocated for rest when needed for both him and his disciples. And the in-between time can sometimes be that perfect time for rest. And as, as part of rest, we need a place or a time when things slow down and we feel safe, where we feel like we can take a load off, like we don't have to be on all the time. And you know, for some of us, maybe that place is caving up at home for a little while. For some of us, maybe it's getting away for a few days out into God's country. But no matter where that place may be for you, when we are in the in-between times, and the place of refuge is not necessarily a physical place. It is a spiritual place where you meet God and he meets you, where you walk with him and you feel his safety. Jesus himself, God himself, is our refuge. In Psalm 62, 5 through 8, David says this, Let all that I am wait quietly before God, for my hope is in him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress where I will not be shaken. My victory and honor come from God alone. He is my refuge, a rock where no enemy can reach me. Oh, my people, trust in him at all times. Pour out your heart to him, for God is our refuge. When we are in the in-between times, it's a perfect time to take refuge in him. Now, we should be doing that every day, but sometimes life comes at you fast. You've got so much going on. You're juggling so many things that you just forget to do it. The in-between times can be times that kind of drive us back to home base, so to speak, spiritual home base, where we seek refuge in the Lord. You know, David says something interesting in that passage. He says, pour out your heart to him, for God is our refuge. The in-between times, again, may be the perfect time to do just that. Not just because you're between major events or you're kind of in no man's land with confusion and uncertainty surrounding you. Because if you're in a position or a time period to slow down, whether chosen or forced upon you, if you remove distractions and deadlines, you can focus on pouring out your heart and relating to God. Again, it's something we should be doing all the time, but we can become so easily distracted. But in those in-between times, we can take the time for introspection and pour out our hearts before God. In 1 Peter 5, 7, Peter gives the advice to cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. And part of pouring our heart out to God and casting our cares and anxieties on him is also being honest with God about who we are, what we've done, what we struggle with, and truly stopping to review our own behavior and our thoughts and our actions and our motives to see if they're Christ-like, 
to see if what we're doing is actually forwarding the mission of the great commission and living like Christ and spreading his gospel into the world. To see if we are truly loving like Christ or if we're being lovers of self. To find out what motivates us. You know, going back to the hockey analogy for a second. Imagine playing game after game after game, but never stopping to look at game tape. Never stopping to see what you're doing well and what needs improvement. Imagine never examining the challenges that you will face from upcoming opponents. Never analyzing your play to see if there's a better way to do something. Never understanding what leads to certain situation, what leads to defeat, and what leads to victory. A lot of us never slow down. We don't slow our minds down enough or settle our spirits down enough to properly relate to God and review our lives. Sometimes the in-between times can be a blessing. A chance for us to reassess our strategies, practice valuable skills, and bring things before our heavenly coach and say, help. These are the problems I'm having. And I'm willing to listen and learn. And when we do these things in the in-between times, when we take the time to relate and review, our God will honor that. And he will refresh and renew. Uh, Paul writes in Romans 12 too, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Don't keep doing the same old things. Open your heart and mind to God. Let him renew you by changing the way you think by giving you some new strategies, maybe by changing your outlook on things, including your opponents. One of my favorite passages in Scripture comes from Isaiah chapter 40, where the prophet Isaiah is describing attributes and actions of the Almighty God. And while he is speaking to the Israelites in captivity, the Jewish exiles, what Isaiah reveals about the nature of God is something that I think every Christian can experience. Um, in Isaiah 40, we read this. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Even youths will become weak and tired, and young men will fall in exhaustion. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. In the in-between times, it is time for us to rest in the Lord, to trust in the Lord, to slow down and find new strength in him. To be refreshed and renewed, not through our own power, but through the power of the Lord and his Holy Spirit working within us. You know, just human nature being what it is, you know, the, the way our bodies and minds and spirits tend to work, a lot of times that, that new strength doesn't just show up overnight. The renewal of our minds doesn't happen in one night or one weekend. It is often in the in-between times that God is building up strength in his people, renewing their minds slowly but surely so that when the in-between time is over, God's people find themselves soaring high again on wings like eagles, running and not growing weary, walking and not fainting. I want to say one more thing about the in-between times before we wrap up. Sometimes it is not pleasant feeling stuck in the middle between two seasons of our lives. Sometimes we don't like the in-between because we just want to get to what's next, whatever we think will fulfill us or make us happy or bring us satisfaction. And maybe, maybe we think we'll find that in our accomplishments. You know, we, we think that we'll find it in somebody else's approval of who we are or what we've done. Or we think we'll find it when we've hoarded for ourselves a certain dollar amount, something that we think amounts to a sense of security, which is often just false security. And we're so busy rushing from one thing to the next in search of whatever that we don't stop to enjoy what we have. We don't pause and feel contentment. We don't actually take stock of the amazing riches that God has given 
each of us, despite our financial situations, despite the state of our mental or physical health, despite our lack of crossed off to-dos or achievements that are still waiting to be unlocked. The in-between times can be a time for us to stop and rejoice. Paul tells us to rejoice in the Lord always. We should. And again, it's one of those things that I think intellectually we can grasp the idea. We know we should rejoice. Intellectually, we know this. But how good are we at actually doing it? You know, the, the, the in-between time, and I'll say the in-between time at the end of the year, between Christmas and, and New Year's, just as an example, the time when we are glued to the couch, half-eaten box of C's candy in front of us, watching the rain outside or the Christmas tree that we're going to have to take down soon. The times that we are on pause, whether we like it or not. I mean, there's not a lot of work to do for one week or however long the in-between is. We really need to learn to enjoy it. We need to enjoy what we have. We need to take that time to take stock in the blessings that the Lord has given us. How can we rejoice and understand the magnitude of the gifts and blessings that God has given us if we never take the time to stop and truly enjoy them? The in-between times can be a place for us to be at peace in the Lord and thank him for all he's done. To enjoy what he's done for us and also to enjoy the fruits of our labor to this point. To slow down and experience the world that he has given us and especially to find joy and peace in him. Um, A lot of us are looking to get in shape, to get healthy for the new year, so I will leave you with this verse from Proverbs 14.30. It's a great piece of wisdom. A peaceful heart leads to a healthy body. I hope you are in a place where you're at peace in the in-between times, when you can find joy and refuge and shelter and peace in our God where you can rest and relate to God, your thoughts, your troubles, your desires, and he can renew your mind and body and refresh you with his strength. Embrace the pause. Embrace the quiet time. God is in the in-between. And if you're here today and and maybe maybe you're caught in the in-between, you've never asked Jesus to be the Lord of your life, you've never experienced or you don't even know that you can seek refuge in the same God who created you and the entire universe and everything good in it. And I want to give you the chance to do that right now. If you put your faith and trust in him, God will deliver rest and peace to your soul. Jesus, God's son, came to earth not just to teach us how to live, but also to secure for us eternal life by paying the price for all of our sins. And three days after he gave his life on the cross, Jesus rose from the dead and he proved his power over death and life itself. Whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life in a place called heaven that he's gone to prepare for us. And when we trust in Jesus and we follow his ways, we can still have abundant life while we're on this broken planet, in the good times, in the bad times, and also during the in-between. So if you've never invited Jesus to be the Lord of your life today, you'd like to do that, would you please pray this prayer right after me? Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I know I've done wrong things. Please forgive me of my sins. Right now, I ask you to be my personal Savior. Be the Lord of my life. Lord, help me to turn from my sins and follow you. I thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. And I thank you for rising again on the third day and taking my sins away. Thank you for saving me. And thank you for preparing a place for me up in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, If you prayed that prayer, what a wonderful way to start the new year. And what a wonderful journey you're about to go on with Jesus. 
Uh, we want to help in any way that we can. So if you prayed that prayer today, uh, I'd love to pray with you and encourage you. And whether you prayed that prayer or not today, uh, if you've got questions, if there's something that the church can help you with, maybe you want to learn more about baptism or getting involved here at Seacoast, uh, maybe you just need prayer for something, you just want to talk to someone, uh, please feel free to come up and see me after the service. Uh, let me know. Or if you've got a rush because, you know, you got to get ready for a New Year's Eve party or a game night, I totally understand. Uh, you can always email me. Right now, I'm going to ask that you contact me through the church office email. That is uh, info at seacoastredondo.com. Don't mind the spelling. All right. Um, Matt, uh, our manager and director of New Media, will make sure he gets us in contact soon. Um, it's, there's really no good time to say this, but, but I need to inform uh, all of you. Um, uh, we've had some passings lately. Um, it's sad for us because we will miss our friends, but we also rejoice in their home going, knowing that they are not suffering, knowing that they are with Jesus, reunited with loved ones, and that we will be reunited with them as well. Um, Maria Willenbrecht uh, passed away, uh, as did Ken Parker. So uh, please continue to pray for their families and their loved ones. And as we um, find out more about services and, and ways to honor them, uh, we'll let you know. We'll keep you informed via the, the e-wave. So be praying for them. All right, everyone. Say goodbye to 2023. Say hello to 2024. And whatever Jesus has in store. May God protect you and grant you the desires of your heart according to his will. And may the events of 2024 be a revelation to you of who God is, how powerful his mercy, grace, and love are. God bless you. Have a great week. See you next year.